Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Traditional guitar hunting tonight, let's start on eBay, with newly listed. First on our journey, it appears somebody tried to make a James Hetfield Signature Explorer with an ESP. However, being branded ESP Custom and this price tag, that doesn't quite line up. What's their story here? Our description reads, not actual ESP. He bought this Gibson and repainted it and put decals. What? <laughs> um, maybe it started life as like a Chibson and then he just put some other stuff on there. Okay. It even has a volute on it. If I had to guess, this is probably just a Chinese replica in general and its entire story's bogus. But at the end of the day, I can't really advise on this particular guitar. I mean, this guy seems to have good feedback, so maybe it is true that he converted a guitar to look like this, but this definitely did not start life as a Gibson. Now, here's an interesting one. I get people asking me all the time, hey Trogly, how do you find husks? Because they see my project guitar videos, the whole luthier type scam thing. So they just think I have a magical way of getting guitar husks. No, you just gotta be diligent in guitar hunt if that's what you're looking for. Because some people, they've got the skills to restore guitars and they don't want to pay full retail price for something that's complete when they're going to modify it anyways. So yeah, if you're looking for a project guitar, you want to search things like project guitar or Gibson husk. Because husk within Gibson territory means this. Everything wood all already put together, you just don't have any of the parts. This guitar brand new is about 1200 And here we can get the body for half that price, 600 Honestly, I think you could probably spend your money a little bit more wisely on the used market, but if you want a newer guitar, okay. Man, it must be husk night. So now we have one of the SG Moderns. Now those are a little bit more pricey. I don't think I've ever seen one of those cards filled out in red before. Perhaps that's something new where they just didn't have any other utensil to write it on. So it says repaired husk. It looks like we've got some dents and dings on the top there. Is it a Guitar Center special? Nope, it appears to be a heel crack special that's been repaired. But brand new, this model's 2200. You can check out my review and demo if you want to know my thoughts and opinions on them. So just the husk that's been repaired for 1200 eh, probably not. Because you'll at least have $500 worth of parts that you have to put on here. So that puts it to 17 and you can buy a used one for about that much. I would not suggest that one. That's the other problem with project guitars. Generally, they're either priced too high or they sell nearly instantaneously because they're a fair price. There's a lot of people who want to do their own guitars up. But hey, what's this? RD Guitar Body Project Mahogany Gibson Style Bolt on Neck. Okay. Gibson doesn't really do too much with the RD body shape, so I think they'll be okay producing these and selling them. But yeah, I think if you just wanted a regular project, now Gibsons aren't bolt on necks, so I think they went wrong there. But if you've ever wanted just a fun RD project, I think the shaping on the horn is a little bit exaggerated on this, but hey, that could be a fun project for somebody for 200 bucks with shipping. Ooh, we've got one of these. We talked about the SG GTs in the GT Les Paul episode, and this one's starting bid 4,000. I mean, you can make them an offer higher or lower. That's not the worst price I've ever seen for one of these. So this one's done up in phantom black. It looks like it could use a slight cleaning, but generally these will have a whole bunch of finish checking all over them. I would like to review and document one of these, though I think I'd prefer one of the more colorful ones. Next up, we got a couple of robots. First edition Gibson robot. I remember when these things came out brand new. <laughs> They haven't really held value all that well, but I mean, if you have a first edition one, I mean, maybe that's kind of cool in that aspect because it was the very beginning of the end for the Henry J era. They just didn't know it. Man, that's got quite a high serial number, but at least they do still have the cool original box. World's first robot guitar. You kind of have to keep that box simply because of what it says there. But then there's this guy, the HD6X. I'll be honest, I don't fully understand this guitar. I always thought it was just another one of them robots, but it's not. I believe you're actually supposed to use this for recording and it gives you an ultra clear signal. Because here's what the edge of the guitar looks like. A whole bunch of stuff going on. There's even a headphone jack in this last ball. That's kind of cool. Okay, I guess you're supposed to use an ethernet cable to plug the guitar into that magic box and then all six strings can be separately amplified. So I'm sure there's a lot of cool tricks that you could potentially use that for, like 
if you only want your bottom strings distorted and then these ones the clean or maybe just have a little bit of reverb only on the g string for a songwriter something like that could be interesting i'm sure there's better ways to utilize that so if you guys want to know why i haven't reviewed one of these yet it's because i'm, I'm too terrified to even try to demonstrate that thing but it could be an interesting tool and honestly, that price is not too bad. I think I saw it get listed on Reverb for just a hair lower as well. But now, what is going on here? Is this a scam or a misprint? So, condition brand new, but $2,000 when these are $3,000 guitars. Let's check this out. Drone Relumo. Nine feedback. One of them neutral. The neutral feedback doesn't seem to be anything. But then down here, he says that the guitar is relatively brand new. Which means no, it's not actually brand new. Shipping time, two weeks as he's out of the country. Yeah, the, the fact that there's no actual real photos on this, it's not worth the risk. <laughs> I mean, I'm all about taking risks for things in the spirit of business, but that one, no, I would not suggest. But hey, speaking of RDs, what's going on here? 70s RD bass with heavy gig bag. Last time listening. Okay, so this has just been heavily modified, wow. Custom pick guard, custom paint job, trying to make it look like a Thunderbird base. <laughs> so they can originally look like this, or this with the smaller profile pickups, which might have been what we started with here. But yes indeed, it appears rosewood is an option on fretboards. However, something about that fretboard just looks off, like it must be brand new as well. But what's kind of unique about this pick guard is it almost looks like it's a translucent wood that has flame figuring. It's either that or they painted the guitar with the pick guard installed and it just happened to be flame maple. So that's our headstock. I know sometimes 70s headstocks look a bit goofy, but that's definitely been redone. Now looking at the back of the headstock, they've swapped out tuners. And then here's our body. Interesting location for your strap button. So let's see what the seller has to say. <laughs> this guy's a bit confused by the serial number, but at least he's knowledgeable enough to know that, hey, that serial number's a little bit weird because this model didn't exist until here. Early prototype? No, not at all. Online guitar dating projects always put those serial numbers way earlier than they should be. I mean, I guess it could be like a late 75. So even having that serial number is a little bit strange. Is it possible that this neck did not even belong to an RD? Perhaps a different Gibson bass? Kind of hard to say. But with all the rest of the work, I mean, even if it was a very early RD prototype, uh, unfortunately, all the value would be out the window. Interesting listing. Not sure I would suggest even paying that much for it, though. And ooh, what's going on here? Gibson Invader Les Paul Custom Flag Electric Guitar. You always got to be looking out for those flag limited edition colors. Ah, there we go. See, I can't actually show you this guitar. These are illegal to sell on both eBay and Reverb due to what this particular flag means to many people today. However, from a historical context, I still would like to review it, but it's one of those you just cannot sell online. There's a reason why this guy's being very vague in his title. That one's not as widely accepted throughout the world anymore as like the Union Jack Explorers or something. But hey, we were talking about project guitars earlier. This shop is a great way to get into a project. They're called the Stratosphere. There's also another one called Gibson Dependable. Gibson Dependable, he parts out vintage guitars, not necessarily vintage, but used guitars, whereas the Stratosphere, generally more brand new, and they're not in the business to keep stuff around. So a lot of times they'll be open auctions with Gibson Dependable or Stratosphere. They just do really fair prices, like 50 bucks for a set of tuners. That's fine. 50 bucks for a set of hardware. That's good. 600 bucks for a Les Paul Tribute. So they are a great place to buy stuff from if you just need something like, look at here, a complete setup, pickups, knobs, pots and all, 300 bucks, not too bad. I personally think these deals, like 1400 bucks, sometimes you can even get slash standards for about that much. I mean, if you've got the stuff already and you don't have to purchase it or you can purchase it at a good deal from them to put it back together, sometimes it can be fun because then you can customize the parts that you do want to and leave stock the things that you don't want to mess with. Now, how they get these guitars, I'm really not sure. I think they're factory seconds, but now that we've got the Gibson demo shop, you would think that contract would end, so that's still a bit of a mystery to me. But they are legit sellers. And now we've got a couple other interesting ones. 
68 Les Paul Standard Real PAFs. That seems like a strange thing to open auction on eBay. That logo does not look 68 to me. Definitely been refretted. Got some humbuckers. That's one of the best smiley face cracks I've ever seen. <laughs> and there's our serial number with what looks to be potentially no volute. And it's a single piece of mahogany from that. But that logo just doesn't look right to me. Like this is one that somebody's added the crown to, but generally they have like pantograph style logo where it's all kind of weird like this, kind of like the prehistoric Gibson logos. But that looks clearly within the 70s, so I don't know about that one. What's our story here? Real verified by Gibson, Les Paul Standard with PAFs. I'm guessing during the headstock repair situation, they might have had to replace the peg head veneer. So maybe he has that within his photos that he's talking about here. But serial number verified by Gibson and re-stamped. Gibson can't verify 60s serial numbers. I mean, they can tell you, yeah, that looks like a Gibson guitar. But generally, they cannot assist you with a guitar built before the late 80s. They just don't have the records of it because the company's changed ownership. So there's some things that look good on this one and some things a little bit concerning. Oh, and add in the fact, zero <laughs> feedback seller. That might be a bit too risky to bid on. But hey, check this out. Gold SG. Gold tuners. It's the back gold too, yeah. 2013. Looks like somebody swapped out our tuners. I was hoping this was like a early 90s, like limited edition or something. That's why I clicked on it. But that looks pretty sweet. Let's go ahead and swap over to some auctions. These Joe Perry Les Paul Studios. They're getting kind of harder to find. Like you can still get one if you really want it, but finding one that still has the wah circuit still in it, I still have yet to experience this guitar 100% fully functional, but I've always wanted the uh, custom shop version. I did own one a long time ago, but that definitely needs a more modernized review to it. It's just the prices have gotten crazy lately. Oh, and how about this? So I've been following uh, Cesar on Instagram and it was a while ago, I think he posted one of these and did like this ominous thing where it might be that Gibson is going to get back into the classical guitar game. I think that would be a lot of fun. I love these old 60s Gibson classicals. Now is Gibson ever going to be able to compete with like the boutique classical guitar makers that are so worshipped? Yeah, probably not, but it might give a nice push to classical guitars because that's not something they do currently. And hey, I love this. Old vintage guitars, people will put their social security numbers in them or driver's license numbers because that was a great way to identify it if somebody stole it. However, nowadays we've got the internet and identity theft. <laughs> Not such a good idea anymore. And to wrap up eBay tonight before we swap over to Reverb, let's check this thing out. The Gibson M3 is a fantastic shredders guitar. They're incredibly comfortable. I'm a big fan of them. But did you know Epiphone made a version too? A little bit less expensive than the Gibsons, but really only about 50% as much. It's got the same body shape that I love, but a little bit different inlay, and your pickups are considerably different. If only it was a stop tail, then I would review this. Swapping over to Reverb here, got an interesting studio, something from 89, a beautiful quilt top, a questionable listing, and something pretty cool. All right, 98 Studio. You know, it's strange. I actually had two separate people commission private help sessions on these exact guitars. So apparently this is called Ruby Red and it's just a very shortly lived standard iteration here. Like that's got an interesting fretboard here. But the way I see it is there's three different kinds of studios. You can find them in the late 90s with small trapezoid inlays, large trapezoid inlays, and then there's a few of them that were done up like this with the 490R, 490T bridge pickup and the dot inlays. As a buyer, I don't really want a dot inlay studio. I would rather it be the full-on trapezoid inlay. However, if you're buying a 80s studio, I mean, you don't really get that choice, but those early 90s studios with the ebony fretboards and trapezoid inlays, that's where it's at in my book. But this one is in Japan. It originated in Japan. And even if you had to pay that to get it back, not a terrible price in today's market. This gold top I was actually looking at earlier because I thought, ooh, 3,200 bucks, that's not too bad. This is very similar to a guitar Robert Baker owns. I remember helping him uh, verify that before he bought that other one, or maybe it was after, I don't remember, but I did help him with that. So I was flipping through these photos and I was like, ooh, that's beautiful. That's looking great, headstock's looking nice. And then you get to the headstock break. Notice the yellow grain fill. 
but hey, check out this made to measure. So 60th anniversary, 59 Les Paul standard. You know, like when I reviewed this one on my channel, they're saying this is the exact same thing except for black knobs with cream plastics. I guess it kind of works due to the double staining of the quilt top here. That is a gorgeous instrument. Especially being built to 59 specs, it's still going to feel like a reissue, but look incredibly modern. That was a fantastic top that they chose for that made to measure. Gold hardware on an R9, that's kind of interesting too. You know, it's these custom ordered one-offs of reissue anniversary years that I think could potentially go up in value over the years. Because every collector wants all of the limited edition anniversary models, so why don't you get one that's fancy and was a custom order? It appears they're asking a thousand dollar premium over these that they were brand new. I was looking at this one earlier, 20th anniversary 1974 Les Paul Custom. I was going through the photos because 2,500 bucks, that's a steal. But unfortunately, there's really no good photos that show us anything. And then when you read it, cool player's guitar, old neck break, fixed and stable, but no refinish. And unfortunately, not a single photo of that. But he's got more photos coming. I know it's tempting to do that, but seriously guys, on your listings, wait until you have all the photos and can write a complete description. If you don't, you're just asking for troubles because that is a really enticing price. Somebody might just buy it, but then when they get it, the headstock looks way worse or there's some other thing that you didn't disclose, like your pickups have been replaced or something. It's just going to be more headaches than it's worth. Wait until you can do the complete listing. It's just better that way for you and the buyer. But the last one I want to check out today, I'm kind of tempted to purchase this. So this is a 1978 ES355, just like the reissues of the Chuck Berries. Like I initially clicked on this listing thinking it was one of those new Chuck Berries, but somebody's selling it for less than retail price. Because those are 8,000 brand new, but they've been selling for 10,000 and there was another completed sale at 14,000 which I just think is crazy. I haven't reviewed this model yet, but that one is coming up. It's been delivered. I just haven't unboxed it yet to film it. But this thing's looking nice and clean. It's technically cheaper. It's the original. I mean, everything's looking good on this for a 1978, the exact year that they just reissued. Man, I doubt this thing's going to last long. But then again, you can look at other kind of similar ones. They're between six and 8,000, but this is the exact year that they reissued. I think it would be cool to own that. These are just fantastically beautiful guitars. I guess the only thing that's slowing me down here is then instead of just reviewing the new custom shop one as what it is, it would be more of a comparison, which I suppose that would be fun in an aspect, but then this beautiful guitar when it get the show time it deserves. But all right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at some guitars with me today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.